Hello and welcome to the video where I'm going to be talking about quadratic factoring. I will show you four nice examples where I will share with you um, several good ways I personally like to uh, use to factor uh, some kind of quadratic expressions in equations. So for the first example, z squared plus 11z plus 18, I'm going to use Vieta theorem, which looks like this, and many of you actually might have seen it before. The Vieta theorem says, when you work with quadratic equations, here they are, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Then if you find roots, uh, you can add the sum of roots should give you minus b, that's this guy b, and we divide by a because we factor out this a at the first place when we work with quadratic equations and if we want to complete the square we do that but uh, it's convenient if a is there is one then you don't even have to be bothered then it's just minus b if a is one that's how i remember it then so the sum of roots will give you minus b then the product of roots will give you c over a or it's going to be c if a is one and then it becomes an interesting fun game and usually the other theorem is convenient to use if the leading coefficient is one and in this fun game now i know that z1 z1 that's the root number one plus z2 should give me minus b so that's minus 11 but when i multiply z1 times z2 that should give me c that's 18 18 and I like this way of factoring because this way is creative and it reminds me of some kind of fun, fun puzzle which I need to solve. First, I usually start with the second case and I ask myself, what kind of um, variations of products will give me 18? So it's 6 and 3, 9 and 2 and so on. So I'm thinking, okay, 6 and 3 will not give me minus 11. 6 and 3 have no... Con uh, 6 and 3 actually have no connection with 11 or minus 11 but 9 and 2 do have a connection 9 plus 2 is 11 i just need to figure out the signs so i know that 9 times 2 is 18 and 9 plus 2 is 11 so one check mark is done but the second one should be fixed how to fix it Maybe it's not 9 and 2 then. Maybe it's minus 9 and minus 2. Let's check. Minus 9 times minus 2 give you 18. And minus 9 plus minus 2 will give you minus 11. Check. So that's how I know these are the good roots. Then it means I can factor it in this way. It's going to be z minus and then the root I just found which is m minus 9, minus 9, times z minus, and then the second one, minus 2. And if I want to simplify and make it look better, it will be z plus 9, and z plus 2, done. And this is the answer. So this is one of the ways of doing. Of course, there are more ways, which you'll learn from the book, and from your class and uh, my favorite second way is to just use quadratic formula and because this is the one actually students clearly remember on the exam when they are stressing out the quadratic formula for the quadratic equation is here and it's you definitely need to remember this one and it tells you that the minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4 ec all over 2a so in this case you can still find the root, and then usually this is, I'm writing it down. It's going to be x1 and 2. That's how I do it, two roots. Sometimes they're the same. Equals minus b. So now I can make some notes, and it's going to be a is 1, b is 11, c is 18. Minus b minus 11 plus minus the square root. b squared, that's 11 squared minus 4 that's part of the formula a that's 1 and then c that's 18 all over 2a that's 2 times 1 so careful simplify minus 11 plus minus everything divided by 2 and inside of the square root you will have 121 that's 11 squared you can check minus and then 4 
4 times 18 is 72. And inside of the square root, we end up to have 49, which is very convenient. Plus minus a square root of 49 all over 2. Here I will a plus minus. Here I will stop, or sometimes I make a list like this. But usually I stop here and then I make a new note. And a new note will be x1 is. Let me actually just keep going below not to crumble everything in one place so i will have x1 is minus 11 minus square root of 49 all over 2 and then x2 is minus 11 plus square root of 49 all over 2 equals minus 11 minus 7 over 2 that's minus 18 over 2 that's minus 9 and minus 11 plus 7 over 2 minus 11 plus 7 that's 4 minus 4 minus 4 over 2 it's minus uh, that's minus 2 and you got the same roots we got before that's the idea but remember this worked because a was 1 so I will show you in the next two examples what happens when a is not 1 and these are two of my favorite ways of uh, factoring so of course you know the other ways and it's up to you to decide which one you like. Second example and the third example both have A in front of it. And this is what you should do. Technically speaking, every time you have A in front of the quadratic uh, expression, you should factor it out if you plan to use quadratic formula. So in those two examples, I should factor it out. So for the first time, for the first one, I actually will factor it out. And it's going to be very convenient because 4 can be just factored out. 4, this is my v squared plus 3v, and then I will have 18 again, minus 18, here it is. And now instead I will find roots for this expression inside of the parentheses, and then the answer will be multiplied by the 4 in front of the expression. So, let's do that. Uh, v squared plus 3v minus 18 equals to zero. That's what kind of quadratic equation I'll be working with. And then again, either you want to play the game, which I just played, and guess the roots. And how would I guess? V1 plus V2 should be minus 3. That's what Vieta theorem says, should be minus this term. But V1 times V2 should be this term at the end, C. So that's V and C. That's minus 18. And now you need to guess, like it's a nice puzzle game. What kind of um, what kind of values will work? And again, 18, usually it's 9 or 2 or 6 and 3. But 9 and 2 have no connection with minus 3, so I kick it out from my mind. But 6 and 3 can actually give me 3 if I play with signs carefully. So I definitely will try V1 is 6. And I will skip space in front of it to change the sign if needed. And then v2 is 3. Then I definitely uh, need first to make sure that there is negative sign in front of the a negative 18. So one of these guys should be negative. But which one? Since the sum is negative, then the biggest one should be negative. Let's check. Minus 6 times 3 is minus 18. Check mark. Minus 6 plus 3 is minus 3. Check mark. And this is how I play this game, and usually it works really well. That means I can factor out, and it's going to be v minus negative 18 times v minus minus 3. And then I can simplify that. But that's not the answer we need. Remember that the first we started with something that had 4 in front of it. So I will go back, like so, put an equal sign, put an equal sign, and I will write down 4. And now whatever was in yellow here uh, will be factored this way. It's going to be V plus 18. Uh, is it 18? It's supposed to be, oh, not 18 actually, that's 6. Oh yeah, that's a good typo here. 
So this should be my, uh, minus 6 and then this should be just 3. Okay, good. Minus 6 and just 3. Because every time I need to subtract the root I found. That's what I'm doing. So when I simplify, I will have v plus 6 times v minus 3. And that is the answer. With 4 in front of it. And that was just luck that the 4 could be factored out so nicely that we did not have fractions to work with. So let me show the example, but then it's not the case. So in this example, example number 3, example number 3, 5 is in front of the quadratic uh, expression, and so we're supposed to factor it out. But if I factor it out, then I will have to work with fractions, which is not convenient, and it will be a hustle. So usually we don't do that. You don't want to work with this. That's going to be too messy. So what usually people do, they still keep 5, they find roots with 5, pretending you did not factor out, and then at the end they multiply by 5, because they remember that they were supposed to factor it out. And again, this comes from the derivation of the quadratic formula. So let's use it this way. Let's do it. In this case, I will not be guessing anything. Uh, I will just jump into quadratic formula right away, which I could do in, number, in the second case as well. For the second case, I couldn't use quadratic formula right away and just calculate everything. So quadratic formula tells me that I will have two roots and it's going to be minus b minus 16 plus minus square root b squared minus 4, that's part of the formula, a, that's 5, c, that's 3, all over 2a, 2 times 5. So now I carefully simplify everything and I will have, I hope to have good numbers instead of the square root because that's not always the case. So let's see, I do have 10 in front and minus 16 in front, plus or minus, and I have a square root. Then the 16 squared is 256 minus 4 times 5, that's 20, 20 times 3, that's 60. Okay, then I will have 10 minus 16 plus or minus 256 Minus 60 is 196, and that looks like a very familiar, nice number for the square root. And indeed, it is going to give me plus or minus 14, because the square root of 196 is 14. In this moment, I usually stop, and I will write down separately two roots. Root 1 is minus 16 plus 14 over 10, or that doesn't matter which one you do first, minus or plus. Minus 16 minus 14 over 10. Again, that's my notation. You don't have to follow it. I just like it this way. Carefully calculate. So like this, understand that this is minus 16, not minus the whole fraction. Minus 16 plus 14, that's minus 2 over 10. And that's minus 1 fifth. Minus 16 minus 14, that's minus 30 over 10 and that's minus 3 put it in the box and that's what we're going to put in the factored form so let's see the factored form will be that's for the quadratic expression without 5 in front of it will be x minus plus 1 fifth you see i changed the sign right away and then oh that's not x by the way we're supposed to call it z so change to z. We give it to you to get used to uh, different variables, not just x. So z1, z2, and here I will have z, z plus 1 fifth, and then z plus 3, because minus minus 3. But remember, we did not factor 5, so we're going to multiply everything by 5. And then the answer will be, I will put it here like this the answer for this expression we want to factor this will be five so i'm multiplying everything by five like this five times and if i multiply everything by five then i can actually 
distributed into z plus one fifth. So then it becomes five z plus one. See, I multiplied by five. This expression here, everywhere, times z plus three. And that is the answer. Put it in the box. Finding the last one, the last one is u squared minus 16. That's one of the favorite formulas students usually have. This is the formula of difference of squares. x minus y each squared gives you a sum multiplied by a difference. Very nice. x squared minus y squared equals 2 x plus y times x minus y. So in this case, instead of x, I have u squared. And instead of y, I have 4 squared. So it's u squared minus 4 squared. Then you will write down this as u. See, my u always looks like 4. u <laughs> my plus 4 times u minus 4. And that's how fast I factored everything out using the formula for the square of difference. Very nice. And in general, you need to remember this formula, the square of difference. One more formula is convenient to know for math classes is the square of sum x plus minus y squared. That's the square of the first term plus or minus double product. The first term and the second term plus y squared. This formula is important to know. In difference of squares, those formulas you will see them quite a lot. And of course, the quadratic equation formula we just covered, and a very nice uh, uh, Vieta theorem, which kind of represents a small game or a puzzle you need to solve. Or you just complete the square the way you know by adding together the numbers and making sure that you can complete the square. Hope this video was helpful, and see you next time.